Hi guys. In case you can't tell, it is really cold here today. We've got like more than a week's worth of rain ahead of us here in Ipswich. And I have acclimatized to Queensland weather, so the cold gets to me more these days. But I've got a little heater running that was given to me by my delivery guy, Sebastian. So that's warming up nicely and taking the chill off the air. So hopefully I can take some of these layers off soon. Anyway, today we are working on these two bedside tables. So I'll turn you around and give you a quick look. All right, so these tables were given to me by the lovely Angela. You've heard that name before. She gave me the floor. These bedside tables aren't an exact match. I think that one is slightly narrower that way. Um, I think the legs on one of them turns out a little bit more. I think that's about it. Like other than that, they're really similar. Like they are close enough to being the same that I'm gonna hopefully be able to do them as a set which is going to be odd because I haven't managed to do a matching set of bedside tables yet. I've only done singles, so we'll see how this goes, eh? Alright, so if you are returning to this channel, you will know that the first thing I always do is remove anything that is not being kept and they get put aside. The next thing I'll do is remove anything that's going to be in the way or anything that needs to be pulled apart. So because I know that I'm going to be doing a timber top and a painted base on this, the first thing I'm going to look for on something like this, especially this type of furniture, is to see if I can remove the top from the base. If it's not too much fussing around with having to reattach it or put pieces back in or if you have a risk of breaking it or damaging it in any way then it's probably not worth doing it but if it's a thing a step that you can take to make it so much easier for you I highly recommend dismantling what you can to make your job easier in this case it's just a matter of taking out four screws from each piece and because these drawers are slightly different I've taken the time to make sure that everything is labeled so that everything goes back exactly where it came from it'll make it so much easier for you down the track so I think this has to be one of the most overlooked aspects of furniture flipping cleaning has to be one of the most important parts of what we do here and if you skip this part there is a good chance you will end up with a really bad finish and you will probably have to go and do it all again so i use carts and millie clean cut to clean all of my pieces and i'll put a link in the description for it i go over it with the cleaning product first with one rag and then i go over it straight away with a clean rag and clean water to remove any residue that might be left behind So I am using the Cartamelli PrepMate 2 Orbital Sander. I love this sander and we'll put the link in the description for it, but you go with whatever sander you want to choose. There is a lot of debate in the furniture flipping community about which sander is the best. I don't think there is a best sander. I think everyone will have their personal choice that fits their needs. This one fits my needs perfectly and I absolutely swear by it. I start with 120 grit sandpaper in this case, but it depends on what kind of finish I'm sanding off. If the original finish, existing finish on it is super, super thick and you think that you're going to struggle to get through it just with sandpaper, I would suggest not necessarily using 80 grit. I know it's tempting and it cuts through it really fast, but it's an easy way to end up with swell marks and deep gouging. Um, if you've got a really thick finish on it, I would suggest using a paint stripper or using a scraper to remove the bulk of it and then sanding. So as I said, I'm starting off with 120 grit sandpaper and then once that's done, 
I'll move on to 240 grit sandpaper and then once all of that's done I will then go around the edges with the foam interface pad with 240 grit sandpaper soften those edges because it is a lot harder to get a nice finish on a sharp edge so when I've got an open end grain like this I like to go around with 400 grit sandpaper and give make sure make sure those end grains are super smooth just to close it off a bit more when you've got an open grain it will absorb more of your stain than it will anywhere else where there is a closed grain So for this piece I'm using Cartamelli washed away stain in the colour Milk Chocolate. When staining edges of pieces like this you can sometimes have it go over the top and you can it, what, you end up with what looks like dribble marks and it can be messy and not look very nice. So when I'm doing something like this, in this case, I'm starting on the underside. Brush your stain on going with the grain. You can be heavy handed with it if you really want to, but I like to just make sure that I've got every part covered. Once I've got it all brushed on, I then go over it with a cloth or a rag in the same direction. So again, going with the grain. Now that the underside is done, I will flip it over and you'll be able to see the marks that I was talking about. So this is why I do it this way, because once you've done the underside you can flip it over, run some, run a piece of sandpaper over it, or get the electric sander out and just go over the top again, it's that easy. And it gives you a nice clean edge. To avoid getting run marks on that nice edge that you just created, just brush it on like you normally would, but flick your brush away from it, so flick it over the edge, not, don't drag the brush over it. You don't have to, but I like to do a gentle sanding with 400 grit sandpaper in between coats. Yes, my roller tray is lined with tape. I ran out of foil and didn't want to go for a drive just to get that. So I'm using Cartamelli Satin Top Coat and I'm testing out these two Fussy Blokes rollers that were gifted to me by Angela. In this pack you get two roller sleeves, one smooth, one semi-smooth, and I'm going to be using the smooth for this. Now I know that you can't see it actually going on in this shot, but it glides on like butter. It is like silky smooth. It is amazing. Um, if you can get your, get your hands on some, definitely do it because this is absolutely fantastic. So I ended up applying three or four coats of Cartamelli Satin Top Coat. Um, I sanded with 400 grit sandpaper in between to get that baby bum smooth finish. And the combination between the, <coughs> the Cartamelli Satin, wow, <coughs> the Cartamelli Satin Top Coat and the two Fussy Blokes Rollers is a match made in heaven. It is absolutely fantastic. Now that it's time to move on to the body of the drawers, I've given them a good clean. I'm not going to show you the whole process, but do not forget to clean inside whatever it is you're working on, especially your rollers, because it will help them glide so much easier if they are clean. Scuff sanding is literally just the act of getting a piece of sandpaper and giving your surface a quick light sand to give it some tooth for the paint to grab onto. Scuff sanding of course isn't always going to be necessary, it all depends on what your substrate is. So if you've got a high gloss surface you really do want to either scuff sand it or use an adhesive primer or do both. At this point right here before you start putting paint on your surface is a good time to decide on what handles you're using if you haven't already. And if you're not going to be using the pre-existing holes, fill them, putty them, and sand them smooth. Do it now before you start putting paint on. In my case, I'm going to be using these cup pulls. Geez, that's bright. Um, 
So I'm gonna be a little bit lazy and rather than filling the holes, I'm gonna be placing the handles over the existing holes. So I'm going to pre-drill the holes for these handles before I paint them. That way I'm once they're all nice and done and finished, I don't have to then mark it up or put tape on it or anything like that to get the holes marked up. First thing I'm going to do is use the pre-existing hole to find the center along this way. So an easy way to do that, I don't like measuring things. So I'm going to sit this part on the top of the drawer like this. I'm going to rest my hand on the bottom of the ruler, place the pencil where the center of it is. Let's put that there. Let's try that again. Now that I've got the drawer sticking out, so place the pencil there. Run it along that way and run it along that way. Next thing I'm going to do is get some tape. And I'm going to place the tape along that line. I'm going to get the handle and I'm going to place it roughly where I want it. All I'm really trying to do is make sure I'm covering that pre-existing hole and getting it, you know, roughly centered this way. And then mark where the holes are. Next thing I'm going to do is get a ruler measure between those two lines so I've got 8.5 so 4.25 and then I'll put a line in there to find the center between those two holes so now I've got that center line on there I'll take the tape off line it up with the pencil line and line up the center line with the center of the existing hole. Now I've got my drill. This drill bit is the smallest one I have on hand and it is not quite small enough for the screws for these handles so I'm not going to go all the way through for the depth of the screw, I'm just going to go in enough with the drill bit so that the screw has something to bite into. There we go. I'm not going to bother tightening those but I can see that that lines up nicely in the center and it looks good. Easy done. roll and I've got these flipped upside down because I'm going to paint the underside and the legs first. There has been a few times where I have finished an entire piece and completely forgot to paint the legs or the feet. Um, so I do those parts first. Now if I can flip it over it makes it heaps easier and so that I'm not having to walk around the table I've got them up on dollies. Do what you can to make your job easier. Alright, so I had trouble choosing a colour to do these in and I asked you guys and you came through with a resounding choice of Parts of Millie Boutique Mineral Paint in the colour Carter's Green. The other options were the, uh, the Blue Hole and Deep Waters, which are navy blue colours, um, but I think this will work well with the top and the handles that I've picked out for it. Let's do it. Oh yeah, I stopped and brought foil this morning.
Before I go painting an entire piece and wasting paint and having to redo it all, I like to do a scratch test. So I paint a little bit of the paint onto one of the surfaces, hit it with the heat gun in this case because it's so wet and cold today. And then once it's all dry, I give it a, you know, bit of a scratch and see how it goes. And in this case, it's great. So I'm just using a brush on the base of it because it's small areas and you know, it's just easy to get to with a small brush. Uh, I'll do however many coats I need on the base before flipping them over. Right, so I'm using the smooth roller sleeve at the moment, but I'm gonna swap it out for the semi-smooth and see how that goes for paint. Katsumili Boutique Mineral Paints have insane self-leveling magic powers. You won't end up with brush strokes in your work unless you are overloading your brush or your roller and putting your paint on too thick. The other way you can end up with what sometimes looks like brush strokes but is actually drag is if you're overworking your paint or if it is too hot and dry and your paint is drying too fast. If you do find yourself getting dragged, just grab a misting bottle with clean water in it and just spray a little bit of water on the surface that you're painting or on the end of your brush or on your roller. Alright, so everything is dry and painted or painted and dry. And I was going to be top coating them, but Ipswich is flooding again and I really want to get home to my family. So um, I'm going for the quickest route and using Katsumeli Boutique Furniture Hemp Oil. Because um, I just want to get these done and get home. Um, on top of that, because today has been so great already. Uh, I just broke my tripod, so this is the highest that my camera will now be. So I'm just using a cloth. I would usually use a brush, but I can't find my brush. And just wipe it on. So just wipe it on all of the surfaces, let it sit for about 5 or 10 minutes, and then buff it. Reattaching the tops was easy enough. I just made sure I had them on the right ones, popped the front screws up through the holes and then lined up the holes from the top with the screws and screwed those into place and then put the back ones in. Apparently I forgot to hit record again, so here's the handles. 
All right, I'm going to pack up and go home and get out of this crappy weather um, because it's really starting to get me down, especially, you know, the staging floor and breaking my tripod and just the general crappy weather. I love this weather when I can stay home, but I'm obviously not at home right now, so yeah. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Can't remember my line. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Give me a like. Uh, don't forget to check the description for any products that I've used that you might be interested in. Some of them will be affiliate links. You don't have to use them, but I do appreciate it if you do use them. It doesn't cost you any extra. It just gives me a little bit of a commission uh, for the work that I'm doing. Uh, if you are in the US and are interested in getting Cartsamelli products, Cartsamelli now has their very first US retailer. And I'll put their link in the description. I'm gonna go home. Ciao for now, see you next time.